This is an introductory video on the voltage source converters used in most power electronics applications. We will look at the main components of a voltage source converter and also identify the building block which is the switching power pole in the um, power topology of um, most of these voltage source converters. From a circuit topology point of view, the power electronic converters can be broadly classified as shown here. Uh, voltage source converters, VSC, uh, also known as voltage link converters or voltage stiff converters. Then you have uh, current source converters or current link, current stiff converters. Then uh, matrix converters and uh, of course the um, earlier thyristor based uh, self or line commutated converters. Of these, the uh, voltage source converters are by far the most widely used type for almost all power electronics applications. The reason for that is the characteristics of uh, the currently available power semiconductor devices like the MOSFETs and the IGBTs. They favor, they have characteristics that are well suited for voltage source converter requirements. Um, so for example, the current source converters, they need the uh, bipolar voltage blocking capabilities and which is uh, hard to achieve in a single device. Um, so therefore, the voltage source converters are um, mostly used and that is why the focus of this module is going to be completely on voltage source converters. As I mentioned, the voltage source converters are used in a wide range of uh, power electronics applications and just a few examples are shown here. Uh, the grid integration of renewable resources, mostly uh, PV and wind, uh, electric vehicle drivetrain as well as the battery management. Um, DC DC converters for powering the information technology, high frequency lighting, and uh, more recently, even at the very high power levels uh, for uh, transmission power flow control, like the HVDC light, uh, making use of IGBT based uh, voltage source converters, and even some of the uh, flexible AC transmission fax devices. The block diagram shows the main components of a voltage source converter. Uh, any power converter is really a closed loop feedback control system. Therefore, the closed loop controller is a key critical part of the VSC. Uh, then we have the pulse width modulator and the gate drive powering the various switches in the power circuit topology. And um, the voltage source converters are characterized by having a voltage DC link and um, they can interface multiple external power systems. So in the next few slides, we'll look at each of these components in a little bit more detail. The closed loop controller obviously is the brain of the uh, power converter system. Um, it is responsible for implementing the various control laws and the different optimization algorithms specific to that application. It process, processes the various uh, command signals, the reference values and the feedback signals and uh, uses that to generate the final control voltage needed by the PWM block to generate the switching uh, signals. So in all the converters, the dynamic performance and the stability of the converter is completely determined by how the closed loop controller is designed. And um, uh, for larger systems like all the renewable energy applications that we are considering, uh, almost they are in, uh, always um, implemented using some digital platform, DSPs or FPGAs. So the controller also is uh, responsible for the communications uh, with the external systems. The pulse width modulator then takes the signals from the uh, closed loop controller and uses that to generate the switching signals, the gate drive for the uh, for driving the various switches of the power topology. Uh, so in this module, we are mostly focused on the renewable, meaning the grid connected converters uh, involving DC to AC conversion. So for us, uh, mostly the PWM involves either a carrier based PWM where a uh, sign control signals are compared with the triangle carrier waveform to generate the switching pulses or a space vector modulation for uh, for three phase applications. For example, this figure shows the PWM implementation using sine triangle comparison method for a three phase converter. So these three signals are generated by the closed loop controller and uh, inside the pulse width modulator, these signals are compared with this carrier triangular waveform and the points at which they intersect determines the switching instance, the switching signals for each of the switches of the three phases. The power converter topology refers to the circuit configuration of the various um, uh, power semiconductor semiconductor devices like IGBTs, MOSFETs and the diodes. 
uh, various capacitors, inductors, and uh, transformers if you're considering an isolated topology. So the application and the specifications, they determine what topology we use. Um, the, the choice of topology significantly impacts the uh, performance, the, all the functionalities, the efficiency, the power density, and other performance metrics, as well as the cost. And um, uh, almost always the, uh, the topology selection and the design of the various power devices, the uh, passive devices, as well as the power semiconductor devices, is really a trade-off between many competing uh, requirements and uh, therefore the design is done to um, uh, optimize a certain performance um, uh, objective. The voltage source converters are characterized by having a voltage DC link. So in, uh, uh, in rough terms, the voltage source converter operates by synthesizing a controlled low frequency AC waveform like 60 Hz. Uh, or DC voltage for DC to DC converters in an average sense. So this is uh, done by switching the uh, DC link voltage at very high frequencies, the control switching, such that the average value corresponds to the required uh, 60 Hertz or DC voltage. Um, it should also be um, noted that the DC link can be uh, a source of power, like in the case of um, uh, central inverters, central PV inverters, the PV source forms the DC link and um, in the case of say for example power factor correction circuits, the uh, DC link is really the load voltage uh, or it can be neither a source nor power, just an interface of power between two different uh, ports. Here is a schematic of a single phase PV string inverter that we will be studying in detail in some of the future videos. Uh, but here I show this only to uh, emphasize the various components of a voltage source converter. So this uh, shaded region corresponds to the closed loop controller. Um, there are actually two stages, a DC-DC stage and a DC-AC stage. The controller for the DC-DC stage is uh, responsible for doing this, um, this maximum power point tracking algorithm that ensures that we are always drawing the maximum possible power from the PV arrays at, a, at any given instant. Then the, the closed loop controller for the DC to AC stage that controls the current that is injected to the grid and it also controls the magnitude of this DC link voltage. So that's the controller. Then we have two separate PWM blocks for each of the two stages. They convert the control signals from the closed loop controller to the corresponding switching signals for these uh, eight switches. And then this is the main power circuit topology. As I said, this is a combination of a DC-DC and isolated boost type DC-DC stage followed by an H-bridge uh, DC to AC stage. Um, and then here is the DC link. Uh, so this DC link voltage is what is um, used to synthesize a 60 Hz waveform at this uh, full bridge output. It is also used to synthesize the correct uh, voltage waveform at this point to, um, to control the the inductive current as well as this input PV voltage corresponding to the maximum power point voltage. So finally the PV and the grid they form the external power systems um, that, is inter that is interfaced by this uh, power converter. Okay next uh, we move to the next section of the video which is to focus on the, the power converter topology and identify the building block of the power stage of all of these uh, voltage source converter topologies. So, um, so the figure on the left that corresponds to uh, most of the DC to DC converters, the buck and the boost and so on. Uh, this is another representation of a buck boost DC to DC converter. Uh, here you have a half bridge DC to DC converter it can also be a, a, a DC motor drive. Um, it can also supply single phase AC um, and the, the lower plot here is a schematic of a full bridge converter which we already saw in the PV inward example that I showed in the previous slide. Or uh, here is a three phase uh, bridge type converters for uh, three phase motor drives or three phase grid connected applications. So in all of these um, um, topologies what we see is this, um, this bipositional switch uh, and that is the building block. Um, it's called as the switching power pole. You can see that in almost all applications, uh, we have one or more of these uh, power poles. So we'll call that as our building block for all the topologies. And the goal is to um, analyze this in detail, derive various um, 
models and use that to analyze the complete conversion where we have one or more instances of these uh, building blocks. So the bipositional switch is the building block and um, um, so this would be a representation of a bipositional switch. Uh, but in an electronic implementation, we do not have a single switch that can perform this um, uh, single pole double throw function. So what we have are uh, single pole single throw uh, switches, meaning simple on off switches which turn on if uh, control voltage is given, a gate drive is given, and they turn off if the gate drive is removed. So we use two of these on off switches to implement this bipositional function. And uh, this is the complete electronic implementation of the bipositional switch. Two control switches could be an IGBT or a, MOS or a MOSFET and two uh, passive diodes to form the, the full implementation of a bipositional switch. Now in certain applications, mostly DC-DC computer applications, where the current, this I sub A, is always unidirectional. So in that case, um, we can implement the bipositional switch using this one control switch and one diode. So for example, in this implementation, this top diode and this bottom MOSFET or IGBT can be removed if I sub A is always guaranteed to be uh, unidirectional in the direction shown. Okay, then uh, let's discuss the um, um, the features and the requirements of a power pole. So first of all, the power pole, the switching power pole is a bipositional switch implemented using power semiconductor devices. Um, then we need this pulse width modulator to generate the switching pulses that determine when the switch is on or off. So the pulse width modulator itself receives a control signal from the feedback controller and then uses different processes to generate the switching signals. And one thing that is um, uh, important to remember is that the um, the two switches, the top and the bottom switches, have to necessarily switch complementarily, meaning if the top switch is on, the bottom switch has to be off and vice versa. If they are both on simultaneously, then the uh, we will end up short-circuiting this uh, DC link voltage, which is not allowed. And similarly, um, we should also uh, theoretically not have both the switches off simultaneously, uh, which uh, in order to provide a continuous path for the pole current. But in practice, we'll see that we will provide a small dead time during which both the switches are off and um, the current is really supported by the parasitic capacitances um, across these switches uh, for that small time interval. Okay, to be to qualify as a power pole, there are a few constraints that need to be met. The first one is called the voltage port uh, constraint. So these blue dots here, this terminal uh, represented by the blue dots, that is the uh, voltage port, which means the um, voltage across um, this, these two end positions, voltage at the voltage port, has to be a non-pulsating DC voltage, as indicated by this waveform. The second constraint is the current port constraint, meaning the uh, the red marked terminals, that's the current port, and there the current should be a non-pulsating current. Um, it does not have to be a pure DC current, actually it is not a pure DC current for our DC to AC applications, but all we require is that this is not a high frequency switching current. Uh, typically the current waveform is something as shown here, and uh, this can follow a, a low frequency uh, trend but it cannot be switching current. The third constraint is that the highest frequency content in this control voltage VC um, A for pole A, uh, that should be significantly lower than our switching frequency the, or the carrier frequency. Uh, that ensures that all our average model and various control methods that we develop are still valid. Um, The power converters that we study are constant frequency converters. So it could be few tens of kilohertz for high power applications, or it could be several hundreds of kilohertz for low, frequent, low, low power applications. But regardless, uh, once the design is done, the frequency remains constant. And the pulse width modulation refers to the uh, control of the pulse width in each switching period to control your, your required average value. So here we explain the um, PWM using this sine triangle comparison method, but the concepts are similar for any other PWM implementation as well. So we generate the pulse width modulator internally generates this uh, triangular waveform, um, assuming it goes from minus one to plus one. 
a symmetrical triangular waveform and the control voltage from the closed loop controller is um, instantaneously compared with this uh, carrier triangular waveform. The convention we use is that when VCA, the control voltage is instantaneously higher than V triangle, which is this carrier waveform. Then the switching signal QA, which is the switching signal given to the top switch, is considered to be 1 for this condition. And if VCA is less than V triangle, then QA is 0, which means the top switch is turned off and simultaneously the bottom switch is turned on. That's our convention. So in this example, um, so VCA could be, uh, it's really a sine wave, uh, but we are zooming in on a very small time interval, like um, 10 microsecond or 50 microsecond, um, whereas the 60 hertz, uh, one period is 16.6 um, millisecond. So the 50 microsecond interval, the VCA is almost a constant, and that is what is shown in this example. So from zero up to this point T1, PCA can see that it is higher than the triangle, therefore QA is 1. And in this smaller interval, VCA is less than triangle, therefore QA is 0. So when Q is 1, um, you know, the top switch is on, therefore this pole output voltage VAN uh, is same as VD because the switch connects VD to this um, pole output. And when Q is uh, 0 in this interval, it's a bottom switch that connects, therefore VAN is 0, shorted out by the bottom switch. The triangle carrier frequency is same as the switching frequency. And um, so from, from this negative peak to the next negative peak, that is one complete switching period, or TS, which is 1 over the switching frequency. And uh, from this negative peak to the positive peak is 1 half of the period, TS over 2. And the time for which Q is 1 uh, in one period is T on, or the time for which Q is 1 in 1 half of the switching period, is that is T on over 2, that is this interval. So the ratio of the T on um, to one complete switching period Ts is defined as this important term called the duty ratio D. The suffix A stands for the duty ratio of pole A. So note that dA can be a function of time. It is a function of time in all DC to AC converters even in steady state. That is because Ts is a constant but T on is a function of the time depending on which part of the AC uh, sinusoidal waveform that we are zooming in on. So D is T on over Ts, it's also the same as T on over 2 over Ts over 2. Here is an example of a PWM sine triangle comparison implementation. Um, I have chosen the uh, carrier frequency to be 4 kilohertz, um, purposely low so that uh, with a modulated frequency of uh, 50 hertz, I can uh, clearly show the um, this comparison of sine and triangle. Um, so if I zoom in somewhere near the uh, positive peak of the sine wave, this is the PWM process. The VCA is high because of the point at which I'm zooming in. The triangular waveform goes from minus 1 to plus 1. And you can see that um, the VCA is higher than the triangle for much of the region, except for this very small region. Everywhere else, VCA is higher. Therefore, Q is 1, as shown by this um, green waveform. And if you looked at the average of this uh, switching pulse, it is a really high value. D is um, defined as T on over Ts is 0.9 in this case, corresponding to somewhere near the positive peak. If we zoom in near the zero cross of the sine wave, then uh, this is the waveform that I get. Um, the VCA is, um, is lower than the previous case. And in response, the Q is also um, high for a uh, lower time interval compared to the previous case. Uh, in fact, for this uh, specific um, example, the um, Q is on for half the time, off for the remaining half the time. Therefore, the duty ratio is exactly one half. If we zoom in near the negative peak of the sine wave, then what I see is VCA is very low and um, it is less than the triangle for much of the time, resulting in uh, Q being zero for a long time and one for just a very short interval. And the corresponding duty ratio is also a very low value at uh, 0.1. So by continuously varying this duty ratio, we can generate um, uh, the required average voltage uh, at the pole output voltage. That is something that we'll be studying in detail in the next video. Next, we will derive a relationship between this uh, newly defined variable duty ratio and the control voltage VCA from the closed loop controller. 
and this will help us um, in analyzing and deriving the models for this building block uh, power pool in the in the future videos so this is the mathematical expression for the carrier triangular waveform in the interval 0 to um, ts over 2 so it's a uh, starts with minus 1 so it's minus 1 plus the slope times t that is expression the slope is uh, it varies by a total of 2 that is minus 1 to plus 1 2 uh, in a duration of ts over 2 so the slope is 2 over ts over 2 so that's a complete expression in this um, interval now we know that we know that at time t1 that is when vca and the v triangle intersect therefore uh, if we substitute t1 in this expression we get uh, minus 1 plus the slope times t1 now is equal to vca that's the value of v triangle at that instant and uh, from the figure we also know that t1 is nothing but this t on over 2 um, so substituting that in this equation we get um, um, t1 equals t on over 2 it's uh, this vca plus 1 times ts over 2 over 2 um, so that is this expression and uh, noting that uh, the d is also defined as t on over 2 divided by ts over 2 uh, we get this final expression okay. so what we have shown is that this duty ratio, this instantaneous duty ratio is one half plus one half of the uh, control voltage coming from the um, closed loop controller. Um, so this is assuming the triangle carrier waveform goes from minus one to plus one, uh, in which case this expression is valid and we are also constrained to have the control voltage always between minus one and plus one. In general, if you assume the triangle peak is um, some B triangle hat instead of just one, then this is the more general expression for the duty ratio. It is still one half plus now one over two times V triangle peak times this VCA. Okay, so with uh, this derivation and this um, brief overview of the um, uh, building block power pool, we are now ready to analyze the, um, uh, the power pool in more detail and see its uh, application in uh, different types of uh, single pole and two pole and three pole converters which we'll take up in the uh, next several videos.